الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران العظيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنذر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم all praises of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we thank him for protecting us we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for keeping us safe for guiding us and keeping us in the straight path we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his blessings his favors and his bounties that he has bestowed upon us i testify that there is none to be worshiped but allah he is alone and he has no partner and i testify that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and final messenger ibadallah my dear brothers and my dear sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers in the Quran people of faith people who have the expectation the hope of meeting with their lord on that final day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses believers in the Quran and he says O people of faith O you who believe be dutiful unto your lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always look as to what preparation you are making for the morrow always look to what you want in terms of this life and in the life the life hereafter and not what you want but how are you preparing for it and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and fear allah be dutiful unto allah allah is well aware of everything that you do my dear brothers and my dear sisters we live in a western society and as as much as sometimes we think that uh, yes this is how we look at a year one year to another year we live in a western society and we see that people they look at year differently in terms of beginning and end and so yes we have completed a year and every day every month every year that we complete we always look back reflection ponder lessons learned did we learn anything so when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that we must look to what preparation we are making for the morrow we need to look back 
we need to ponder, we need to assess, we need to evaluate. What can we learn from the past year? And some say it was a unique year, an unprecedented year. Some say it was a challenging year, and some could not wait for the year to finish. How do we look at it? Is there anything that we can benefit from? Yes, there is still a global pandemic. Yes, the virus is still around. And we wish, we pray, and we hope that this virus will disappear soon. I mean, yes, our lives, we experience changes in our lives. And so as we look back, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, even though when we look at the world and we say that it was turned upside down, twenty twenty was a year in which we decrease our pace, we slow down. You know, we live in a city that never sleeps. And people are always working, hustling and bustling. People are all over the place. Sometimes holding down two, three jobs. Don't have time for family, don't have time for social life. We experience something different. We learned to be content with what we have. We learned that which we knew, but it was re-emphasized that nothing is forever. Do not become complacent and think the thing will remain the same way as it is forever. People come and they go. Babies are born and others are departing this world. It's not the same. And we were so much reminded of it in 2020. As we look back, we, we understood that we must always be prepared for the unexpected. Can it happen again? Can it get worse? They are predicting that it will be worse. Are we prepared? This is how we look at life, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. We changed so much in terms of how we live life. Islam teaches us that it is not about us alone, me, me, me. 
And so often we think only about ourselves, selfishness. But 2020 taught us to look out for others, to be concerned about others. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man lam yahtam bi amril muslimin falaysa minhum. He who does not concern himself with the affairs of the Muslims, he is not from among them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the most loved of Allah's creation, the most loved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are those who are beneficial to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam teaches us that we need to lead a, we need to lend a helping hand whenever we can, that we should always be looking for opportunities to help people to make a difference in the lives of others. And how many came to the aid of others? When we look at heroes, when we look at first responders, think about the Muslim doctors and the Muslim nurses and, and those healthcare workers and all those who made a difference they were there day and night with others because of the resources that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with they came out and were able to help others We, we, we adopted. We knew that things were not going to be the same. And so we adopted a different lifestyle. Even those who are learned or were scholars they had to go back to their books. They had to go back to the treasures of knowledge to look up and to, 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 to redefine and look at how we can make changes. What can we do in this world of this pandemic? And so they made changes and there were virtual khutbas and there were virtual wakes and there were virtual funerals. They, they made sure that they, they were able to accommodate the community. They brought people together. Ramadan came and it was a different Ramadan for us. Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha. What did they do? They look at the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and gave us instructions as to how we can still continue to worship our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not a year just to forget my dear brothers and my dear sisters. We look at all opportunities morning and evening and on the lips of the believers, there were so many du'as that were uttered. Bismillahi alladhi la yadurru ma'a ismihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fis sama. Wa huwa sami'u al-alim. People were repeating it morning and evening. And people were repeating the, the, the calls morning and evening and say so many dua, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection. Do we forget? Like others say, we just want 2020 to go. Yes, it is gone. 
but we reflect and we ponder and we look at the things that we have accomplished. We changed our lives in certain ways. Look at the very basic things that at times we tend to forget them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that he loves those who repent and he loves those who purify themselves. And we took the opportunity to constantly, the Islamic hygiene, wash, We, we know that at Tuhur Shatrul Iman, cleanliness is half of faith, but how much do we practice it? 2020? Maybe we have never washed our faces and our hands and different parts of the body as much as how we washed them in 2020. Didn't Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell us the first thing that we wake up in the morning before we go touch anything? We wash our hands because we do not know where our hands slept. He emphasized so much on hygiene. And we saw not only us, but the entire globe, the world, people all over the world were engaged in this type of hygiene, cleanliness. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we saw so many stepped up And even those who did not have, they look for opportunities to make a difference in the lives of others. Our charitable organizations throughout this country and the world, Muslim charities, they, they, they went over and beyond in terms of meeting the needs of people providing for them PPE, providing for them food, water, clean water, providing for them medicine. They made a significant and a great difference in the lives of people through the help of us. Muslims who contributed towards them. How often were we able to pray with our families and break fast with our families? How often were we able to spend quality time with our families? In 2020, we had to adapt, we had to make changes. And so children saw their parents more than they ever saw them. Children spend time with their parents. Children were able to give an instruction. When Islam teaches us that 
al um madrasa, that the mother is a school. We saw it so much in 2020. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, should we be like others, saying that we are happy that 2020 has gone and what has gone with it, good riddance to it? No. Yes, this is life. We move from one period to another. We move from one stage to another, from one time to another. But we always reflect, we always ponder, we always evaluate. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man istawa yawmahu fa huwa maghboon. He whose two days are equal in accomplishment, he is a sure loser. So we want to make sure that every day we can accomplish more. That every day we can strive for excellence. Remember, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Everything will disappear. We will all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will have challenges in life. We will have difficulties in life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسِمْ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إن لله وإن إليه راجعون. And we will certainly test you with something of fear and hunger. And we will test you through the loss of properties, lives. How many lives have been lost? We sit at our dinner table and someone is missing. Never to come back. And we will test you through the loss of crops. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, give glad tidings to those who have patience. As sabru Jazauhu al Jannah. Patience, its reward is paradise. So says our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Give glad tidings to those who have patience, those who say, From Allah we came and to Him is our return. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, there are so many lessons that we have learned from 2020 as we continue into this new year. Let us not forget those lessons. Don't think about going back to normal. People think about going back to normal in terms of uh, sometimes it's all about this dunya. Twenty twenty, this global pandemic has taught us to think about hereafter. Has taught us to focus more on our akhirah and has made us realize that we don't, yes, we don't know when we will go. People are dying. And we don't have op the opportunity to even pray their janazah. We can't get close to their families. 
the embracing and hugging and kissing and all, it's all gone. When we think, when we think about this and we look back, think about the opportunities that Allah has given us so often in our lives and we did not make use of them. So don't make opportunities slip by. Use whatever resources Allah has blessed us with to make sure we do what is required of us with regards to our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with regards to His creation, our fellow brothers and sisters in humanity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us safe. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill within us that urge to always come closer to Him in our sayings, in our actions, in everything that we do. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمن المؤمنات من كل ذنب فاستغفرون إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters when we look back at the year past Yes, Muslims did accomplish a lot. Muslims did make a difference. And we need to continue to make a difference. But when we look at the year past, we did see also that Islamophobia was on the rise. We did see also that people were disenfranchised because of the color of their skin. They were discriminated against. We saw that the Chinese Muslims, the Uyghurs were still put in concentration camps and they were forced into, it, 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 there was that forced labor, they did things that they did not want to do. We still saw the sufferings of the Rohingya Muslims We saw sufferings in Sri Lanka, in Kashmir. We saw in India, in Assam, the, the people were not, the citizenship was taken away from them. They did not have the right to citizenship. And recently we saw what happened in, in, in France and the talk about concentration camps for Muslims. So we still have work to do. We still need to continue making sure that our voices are heard when Muslims are suffering, Muslims are being persecuted just because of their faith. 
And we still have work to do with regards to making sure that future generations and people all around us understand that it is not because you are not superior to another because of the color of your skin. Sometimes Muslims sit at their dinner table and they make statements that has some touches of racism. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he eradicated all forms of racism. And as I close, I want to remind you and remind myself of what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did in his farewell message. He said, there is no superiority of Arab over non-Arab and non-Arab over Arab and there is no superiority of white over black and black over white except with taqwa fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is, it is reported that once some of his companions were sitting and they were waiting for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam among them was Abu Dhar al-Ghifari Bilal ibn Rabah Khalid ibn Walid and Abdurrahman ibn Auf. These were great companions. Ab Abdul Abu Dhar mentioned something and he was corrected by Bilal ibn Rabah. And Bilal was an Abyssinian slave. So he said to Bilal, even you, Bilal, the son of a black woman, choose to correct me? And Bilal was very upset. He said, I will complain to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he complained the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Abu Dhar you ridicule him because or an account of his mother O oh, Abu Dhar you still have the traits of Jahiliyyah within you the traits of the pre-Islamic era within you. Abu Dhar, he realized his mistake, he wept, and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, pray to Allah for my forgiveness. And then he left the masjid in search of Bilal. When he saw Bilal, he put his head on the floor and asked Bilal to, to step on his head. He said, you are honorable Bilal and I am disgraced. Bilal, the Abyssinian slave, the Muaddin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he kissed the cheek of Abu Dhar and he said, a face that has prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should not be stepped on. Instead, it should be kissed. This is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam groomed his companions and made them love people just because of their actions, their deeds, it didn't matter what the color of their skin was or the language that they spoke or where they came from. And so we may have some 
issues with others. But we need to be careful as to what we say and how we say it and, and make sure that uh, there is no touches of racism within us. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, yes, 2020 was very unique. 2020 was very challenging. 2020 was unprecedented. But 2020 has taught us many lessons that we need to live by. 2020 has left us with many lessons that we need to move forward with. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ And whoever fears Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show him the way out of every difficulty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him sustenance from places or from sources that he never expected. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continue to build a taqwa, piety, become more God conscious, become more God fearing. This is what is required of us. So that when death comes upon us, the hope that we will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And do and return not to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except in the state of submission, except in the state of obedience. Let's hope for that. Let's strive for that. And it will only be accomplished through piety, God-fearingness. لَقَدْ أَمَرَنَّ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه على الرباع أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعلي ونستة الباقين المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على الدين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هم إلا فرجته ولا هاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قديتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا دينا إلا قديته اللهم تقبل من إنا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالأدل والإسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباقي ذكم لكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله لا نعمه واشكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون قم السلام